Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Cathedral. It is good to be gathered together today for worship. A couple of announcements as we begin this morning. The first is that this coming weekend, we have two wonderful events on Friday evening and on Sunday evening. On Friday evening, Mary Lou and her good friend Dee will be playing a concert of piano duets, and that will be at 7 p.m. on Friday evening in the church, and all donations that evening will go to support inner city pastoral ministry. If you are unable to attend the concert but would like to make a donation to ICPM, you can do so through their website and uh, you can just Google inner city pastoral ministry and it comes up and uh, you can either give through e-transfer or uh, by Canada Helps donations. And so that is Friday evening. It will be an evening of beautiful music and, uh, and a lovely way to spend a Friday evening. On Sunday evening, we will be dedicating uh, the weaving that took place of the Remembering the Children's Project. And so this was weaving that went across the diocese uh, and stopped at various points to, and each line of the, of the weaving of the blanket that has now been made is in uh, dedication and memory and remembrance of children who did not return home from residential schools. And so we will be gathering together on Sunday evening to dedicate this project, to pray and to remember well together, to honor those children and to consider again a different way of living together on this land. And so I enjoy, invite you to join us on Sunday evening as well at 7 p.m. Finally, there, are, there is a new hymnal that has come out from the National Church, and if you would like to make a donation for the cathedral uh, to have more copies of this, I, uh, you are welcome to make a donation. Uh, each hymnal will cost $28, and this is a supplement to the hymnal we, will use, we continue to use of common praise. As we begin, we acknowledge that the land on which we worship is the traditional gathering place of the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarksi, Soto, and Mohawk, and Métis nations. And we commit in both prayer and action to be faithful Treaty 6 partners.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray. Father, we praise you through your word and Holy Spirit. You created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out. To you, O people, I cry. I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth when he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first, first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight. Rejoicing with him, always rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Word of the Lord. be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of Christ.
us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please go ahead and be seated. We find ourselves this morning at the end of three feasts. We had Ascension, Pentecost, and now Trinity. I admit that it is difficult to talk about the Trinity in any way with any semblance of sense without really getting into some sort of weird heresy. It is full of mystery. So I'm grateful from, for these words from the theologian Debbie Thomas who captures this. She says, if you're like me, you've been at the receiving end, or for perhaps myself and the dean, the giving end, of many well-meaning but inadequate attempts to explain the three in one. The Trinity, well, it's sort of like water, liquid, vapor, ice. I think we've all heard that one. Three phases, one entity. Or think of a tree, the roots, the trunk, the branches, three parts, one tree. Or my favorite, the egg the shell, the egg white, and the yolk, all of those fall short. And none of them address the deeper question of why in the world should we care? What difference does a God who is three in one make? So God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but so what? And I don't mean to be so trite, but the so what question is essential it's essential whenever we are reading scripture, whenever we're talking about these great doctrines of the church, because many of us are tired physically, emotionally, spiritually. Some of us might be struggling with illness or loss, troubled relationships, maybe financial hardship. Some of us are lonely, might be disappointed, angry, or heartsick. And some of us are barely hanging on to a belief in one God. And now the church wants us to contemplate three. Why? What is so important that we have a feast day to understand what it is that God is three in one? I want to suggest three things this morning. And by no means will you walk away from this thinking, wow, I understand the complexity of the Trinity so well. Rather... If we see the relationship in the Trinity, perhaps you and I can leave saying, oh, the traits of God, maybe I can take those on in a new way. In the Trinity, we see that God is dynamic. God is communal and God is love. And if God is these things, then so too we as God's children are invited into embodying all these characteristics. These what we might call the family traits of God. So in the Trinity, we see that God is dynamic. If God is triune, God doesn't exist in a stasis. God's self is fluid. God moves. Or to use the theologian Richard Rohr's language, God flows and God is flow. God dances and God is dance. And regardless of whether you and I will learn to tolerate the discomfort of divine fluidity and movement, we worship a God who is always on the move, always spilling over, always more than we can ask or imagine, always a surprise. God's coherence and unity do not require God to be rigid. Expand, do not contract God, Ken Stork writes in his poem, The Holy Trinity, for God is the great iconoclast. God is always in the business of breaking out of the boxes we love to put him in. And in the Trinity, we see that God is communal. It is one thing to say, yes, God values community, or that God thinks community is good for you and I. It's altogether another thing to say that God and God's very being is community, communal. That God is relationship, intimacy, connection, and communion. If God is interactive at the very core of God's heart, if the three is the deepest nature of the one, what are you and I doing when we isolate ourselves from each other? When we decide to go it alone? When we privilege independence and autonomy over companionship, mutuality? If the Trinity is a bit more than just a bit of dusty doctrine that the early church fought over, 
then we shouldn't take lightly the life-changing power of the communal, God as community. If God is relationship three in one, then it is only in relationship that you and I are going to experience the fullness of God. And finally, we see that God is love. The Trinity at its very heart is an expression of deep, unfaltering, life-giving love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The relationship between the person of the Godhead is not about domination, power-mongering, manipulation, or jealousy. It is a relationship of unselfish, sacrificial love. I know something I often struggle with. And all this begs the question, if God's very being is grounded in love and we are created in God's image, then who are we? What are we? And are we like the triune God whose imprint we bear, creatures motivated by love? And if we look around, around at our world, maybe even in our own lives, I know I can certainly see plenty of spaces and times where I'm not motivated by love. Certainly as we see war, then dissension, we see a lot of lack of love. But if we're not motivated by love, then what are we really doing with our lives and our lives together as a parish? What does our piety amount to if it's not grounded in love? So why should we care about the three in one? We should care because we are children of the Trinity. And we are invited to embody these family traits of God. We are the children of a mysterious and dynamic, communal and loving God who wants to guide us into the whole truth, as our gospel reading said. The whole truth of who God is, but also who we are. We should care because the mystery of the Trinity actually has the power to transform our hearts, our lived life together, leading us as a faith family towards coherence and dynamism, unity and diversity towards love. So this week and always, may our lives together reflect the truth and the beauty of a triune God. Amen.
Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Give all churches the ability to serve their congregations in a manner so as to provide peace, hope, and fulfillment. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, remembering the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Primate of Canada the Diocese of Ontario, the Right Reverend Michael Olton, Bishop, and in the Diocese of Edmonton, the Right Reverend Stephen London, our Bishop, in the Parish of St. Paul in Leduc, Robin King, their Rector, in our partner Diocese of Bouye, the Kayanza Parish, Amos Mutanzana, their Rector, and in Treaty 6, the Saddle Lake Cree Nation. Lord, Hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Spread peace over all nations and comfort and strengthen those whose lives have been shattered by, by violence, especially in Ukraine. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, Hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for our greater pray, for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. We pray for all frontline workers and those affected by COVID-19. <coughs> Lord, Hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear, despair, or illness. Comfort those who have asked for our prayers. Rebecca, Peggy, Lois, Bob, Vivian, Ben, Anne, Gordon, Janet, Mary, Jerry and Debbie, Heather, Kay, Bonnie, Mel, Dale, Mariko, Brian, Barb, Tiana, Alexis, Grace, Kiera, Richard, Mark, Paul, Laura, and Liz. Grant a peaceful end and rest eternal to all who are dying and, com and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to God's table. Let us therefore confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I invite you to stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Living God, receive all we offer you this day. Grant that hearing your word and responding to your spirit, we may share in your divine life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise because in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. Therefore, with all the company of heaven, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, 
and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you in all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.